Let's touch on one more subject. Uh, there are patients who come in with uh, locally advanced stage 3 disease or oligometastatic disease, and there are new therapies now for direct injection of lesions with um, agents that cause local regressions. One of them is TVEC. Um, Robert, can you comment on those agents, the, the value of those agents, and how they fit in the treatment armamentarium at this time? Sure. So all of these treatments are still un under investigation, so none of them are yet approved. The agent, oh, and uh, if we look at the spectrum, there are over 50 of these agents being developed at the moment. And the one that has reached the furthest is really telemogenal herpirepec, also known as TVEC. And we presented last year at ASCO a study looking at a randomized phase 3 study looking at TVEC versus GMCSF. And we presented some updates on that this year. And what it showed was that in patients that have an injectable lesion, these are either dermal, subcutaneous, or nodal lesions, not visceral lesions. Uh, in those patient populations, the durable response rate in patients receiving TVEC was uh, significantly greater compared to GMCSF, 16% versus 2%. We also know that the overall response rate for the patient, not just in the injected lesions, but the overall response rate was 26% in the uh, TVEC arm compared to 5.7% in the GMCSF arm. We also presented this year that the, the responses then, uh, there was also a um, an improvement in overall survival. It re did not reach a statistical significance. The p-value was 0 0.051, but the hazard ratio was 0.79. So I think, and also if we look at this, in select patients that have an injectable lesion that has disease that is not rapidly progressing, I do think that these agents have a role specifically because they can be very effective in the lesion that we inject and in regionally uh, non-injected lesions. In distant sites, they're not as effective, which is, I don't think is different from many other immunotherapies that we have that they are not necessarily as effective. And I think also in patients that have a poor performance status, these agents are indicated, especially since the um, side effect profile is extremely well tolerated by patients on these agents. Moving forward, though, I think that in, as we talked about, with virtually all of these agents, it's really going to be combination studies. And Omid, you commented on also an ongoing study right now combining TVEC with ipilimumab. And I think that moving forward, this is going to be one of the agents in the armamentarium to combine to activate the immune system for patients. But, but moving even forward to that, um, on not just TVEC, but other agents, there have been preclinical models with combination. And really looks promising with the combination in PD-1. So that, that, and th there's going to be a TVEC trial with, with, with anti-PD-1. It's also going to be arranged. But some of the other agents have looked at preclinical models and mouse models that the combination with PD-1 looks very, very promising, that, that maybe you can even augment the systemic immune response even to have um, improved regressions in uh, distant metastatic disease as well. I think also with this, these, as we said, the... The um, adverse events from these injectable lesions is very low, many times much lower than the other immune therapies. So I think that moving forward also in those combination studies, I think it will be important to determine the ability of these combinations to activate the immune system and to decrease the amount of toxicity overall for patients. So I'd like to thank all the panelists for, uh, for, for their participation. This has been an absolutely great discussion. We've reviewed a great deal of information on the clinical advances and pra practical considerations in treating metastatic melanoma. To close, I'd like to get the final thoughts from each of the uh, panelists. Uh, Dr. Anbaka? So from a surgical perspective, I think it's important to recognize that for primary melanoma, surgery is still the main treatment for patients. And I think also uh, the majority of patients present with non, no evidence of metastatic disease, so sentinel home biopsy is important. I think also from a surgical side, surgery also has an important role and should be uh, considered in a multidisciplinary setting for patients with metastatic disease. And I think all of these patients really need to be discussed in that setting. Dr. Ross? Well, my last comment has to do with that the future from a surgical perspective is going to be in designing and participating and helping in f completing neoadjuvant trials and bringing those not just from the metastatic disease setting but also into the advanced stage 3 setting where they are resectable so we can uh, better understand how these therapies would work in the, well, uh, potentially work in the adjuvant setting. And I also, the last comment would be that I think even for the metastatic disease setting, no patient, I don't think, should, should start therapy based on a single evaluation from one discipline. I think a, every, all these patients should require multidisciplinary input 
where surgeons, medical oncologists, and maybe even radiation therapists and pathologists are sitting around the table and trying to figure out the best strategy for an individual patient. Thank you, Dr. Oz. It's actually an excellent comment uh, and very appropriate. Uh, Dr. Weber. I'll, uh, I'll summarize my thoughts by giving you a quote from uh, my last slide at the uh, discussion at ASCO just recently. And it, of course, is from Frank Sinatra. And it's for, uh, for metastatic patients and adjuvant patients, I think the best is yet to come. And Godfather, could you please uh, <laughs> help my career? Um, Dr. Sussman. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to thank all the other uh, discussants because I, I, for one, learned a lot and, and I thought the exchange was great. Um, I, I actually would, would uh, uh, vocalize the same kind of comments that Dr. Weber just did. I think we're, we're at a point where we're really excited about the new drugs. But yet, we don't know exactly how to use them together, and uh, certainly together with surgery or together with targeted therapy and immune therapy. So I think, I think the future is very bright. I'm hoping that we'll still be able to get these clinical trials done. I do have a concern that, that uh, the community will feel that we've sort of reached a plateau, and that would be a shame because I think we really could maybe cure more metastatic melanoma patients, and that's going to require a lot more investigation. Dr. Hamid. So I, I would echo what my colleagues have said, but to patients I would say that clearly we have not stopped. We now have more tools in the toolbox. We have a great buy-in from our colleagues, not just in the medical oncology, but surgical oncology field, but also in the pharmaceutical field to help us bring these drugs together. I can remember a time when that felt like it was never going to happen, and it is happening now, and we have a greater dedication to finding those predictive and prognostic markers, not just in tumor, but in blood. Um, and finding the right answer so that we can identify the patients that will benefit, not just in the metastatic setting, but then bring these paradigm-shifting therapies into the adjuvant setting to benefit more patients. Thank you. I think for myself, I, uh, um, we've made amazing advances. I mean, I see so many patients in the clinic now that are doing better. We clearly don't, don't cure everybody with this disease, but we've made enormous advances. I, I'm going to quote one of my colleagues. Um, even though we've made enormous advances, I don't think we've even scratched the surface of the potential for the, the new agents that are out there and the targets that are out there to improve the cure rate in metastatic melanoma. So clinical research, continuing these trials is going to be critical for these advances, and I think we all agree on that. And I, I love the comment regarding multidisciplinary management of the patients, because no matter how good our drugs are, we can't do this without the dermatologists, the pathologists, the surgeons, the radiation therapists. Um, and I think patients get best care when all of these multi, all of these disciplines get involved in, in, in their management. So with that, I, I'd like to, uh, uh, on behalf of the panel, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, we hope that you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative. Uh, thank you again. <laughs>